Get that wildcat rig out of my way. I can't. My wheel's gonna bust. I can see that. Use your spare. I ain't got no spare. Well, then you better drag that rig out of my way. I got a schedule to meet, and I'm gonna meet it. Okay, we'll cool off in a minute. But I ain't gonna bust my axle. You move them jugheads, or I'm gonna move them for you. Listen to me. All right, now let me, let me tell you something, mister. I know the feel of a whip and no man and no animal ain't gonna feel a lash when I'm around, you understand? <laughs> Virginia City, much obliged. Yeah, my name's Joe Cartwright. This is Candy Kennedy. Patty. Yeah, you can just call me Gunny. This here's my woman, Serafina. Con mucho gusto, senor. Virginia City, you planning to stay long? No reason to. I'm heading north to Canada as soon as I deliver this load. There's only one freighter in Virginia City. They sure could use another. Well, thank you, but I'll be moving on. Well, if you run into any trouble fixing that wagon, we got a line shack a couple of miles from here. You're welcome to use it. I ain't looking for no charity, mister. Hell, I'm not offering you any. Change your mind about hauling that freight, just let me know. I'm obliged. All right, let me stay here and uh, give him a hand, huh? Good night. You're ex-army. What makes you say that? Way this gear stowed and lashed, that's army. So are the knots. Yeah. You sound like a forward. Born and raised on an army post. Well, anybody can learn how to tie a knot. You want to pull that log out of there, son? Gunny. That's what gunnery sergeants are called. Yeah. Well, it could be for Gunny's sack. What my paw stuffed me into to throw me to the sharks. I'm a freighter, mister. The best. All right, so I guessed wrong. I'll help you with that. Get you hitched up, I'll show you that flying shack, all right? Muchas gracias, Don't senor. Kenny, I hope you think on that freighting job. It'll be with you while. Well, I'll study on it, mister. But I think that's all I'll do, brother. Yep. Adios. All around, the land is good. A man could taste it, know when to plow, what to plant. Seraphine. Maybe this place. Seraphine. There ain't no place in this country. All these years, and never one piece of land to call our own. Catches up, Piki. It always catches up, all right? But there is this pride that I have for you. Well, one man's pride is another man's hate. But I know you better than anyone else. And I cannot forget that in my country you are a hero. Well, that's a long time ago. And there ain't no place for me here or in your country, all the right? The past, always the now, past. Listen, the past is right here, Ahita. Right there, where they branded my face like a pariah dog. That's the past. Maybe it was you who branded them.
gave this place a chance. No. No, not this place. Canada. Up there, they would have a chance. But after all this time, people must forget. No, there's always going to be somebody who remembers. Always, as long as I'm in this country. You are my country. Mi mundo. As long as I am with you, that is country enough. Sell your outfit, Wildcatter? No. Nope. You got a load of freight going north? Why? I'll haul her for you. Uh, nothing moves in or out of Virginia City. It's not on Cambo wagons. You'd make out better working for me. I'm my own man, mister. Yeah, $100 for the wagon, 50 piece for the horses. That's 100% more than they're worth. Yep. I'm moving on. Steady job, top pay. But he's been out to see Cartwright. He offer you that timber job that can't be done? Better get your foot off my wagon. You can't pick up work here, Gypsy. I get every business under contract to Cabo Free. Yeah! I like the way he handles his rig. Handles it better than you handled him. He'll come crawling back. Them? Yep. As soon as his empty belly tells him to. Thirty footers. Hand you and Mr. Campbell. Hand you and. There isn't a mill within a thousand miles of here can cut beams this size. Well, I can haul them to Virginia City for you. All you have to do is cut them in half. Mr. Campbell, our contract with the Opera House calls for three 30-foot beams, not, not six 15-footers. Well, do you think you can haul them as they are? Well, it's an impossible job, but I think I can do it. Once you sign that contract. We doubled the price in this contract. Well, the old contract's expired. You got a contract expiring, too, ain't you, Mr. Campbell? You mean the government mail and freight contract? Well, I'll win that again. Never lost a contract race yet. No competition this time. Nobody wants to race against me. You may as well sign it. I'm the only freighter around. I wouldn't say that. Uh, you, you talking about that gypsy teamster? Mm-hmm. I offered him a job. He's thinking about it right now. Well, Mr. Cartwright, I can't waste any more time. Sign now, or we'll both forget it. Mr. Campbell, I don't like ultimatums. Your choice, Mr. Cartwright. But you made a mistake. You got more than beams to haul. You got logs and lumber. You haven't got the rigs or the drivers to do it. You're gonna have to sign this contract. When you do, the price may be higher still. Hey! Take this wild getter you found good, huh? Yeah, I think so. Find out.
Hi, right, senor. I'd like you to meet my brother Hoss and my father. Con mucho gusto, senor. Is your husband around? We want to talk some business with him. Ah, hey, Gunny. Howdy. I know the shack wasn't much. I hope you found everything you needed. No, she's fine, thank you. Gunny, I'd like you to meet my father, Ben Cartwright. This is the man I was telling you about. Nice long talk with Gunny. That should be sufficient for you. Yeah, we talked to Gunny. But he didn't tell us anything. What's it all about, huh? I have nothing to say. Well, I think you're gonna have to say something. There has to be a good reason to kick a man and his wife off our land. I'm sorry that I lost my temper. Let's just leave it at that. That's not enough. What's it all about? I'm sure you two have plenty to do without standing around here talking. Why don't you go do it? Come in. Well, come in, come in. Doors open. for me to forget that you're a traitor. You got the wrong word. That's a D tattooed on my cheek, not a T. That's right. A D. Or deserter. A deserter. I spent 15 years in your army. From milk suck bugle boy to gunnery sergeant, the best the army ever had. And you used those guns leading the San Patricio Battalion against the Americans at Churubusco. Blizzards, we give you. Blizzards of Grepno from the heights we give you. Yes, that's right. And killed my men for Santa Ana. For my brave St. Pat boys, that's what it was for. The potato famine Irish, they had reason enough to cross the river over to the Mexican side. Fresh off the boats they was, looking for freedom, and what do they get? The army grabs them. The horses was treated better. You socks. The horses wasn't tied to stakes and whipped. Yes, I saw it. I was there, and I said it was wrong, and you know that. Said it was wrong at the time. I said it was wrong at the time, but that's no excuse. You were not born Irish immigrant. You were born under the stars and bars. They was my men! I told you I'd hold for you. Well, you've got some long timbers up there that nobody can get down. I'm the best freighter around, man. You need me. I don't need you. All right, I was just returning a favor. What favor? I've been to town. You didn't tell anybody about me. I owed you for that. Now we're even.
saw a gunny riding up. And we uh, found some fences to fix. We worked on them. Good. Hey, you want some coffee or something? Something on your mind? Something you'd like to ask? No. Well, I figure you got all the answers and all the questions, Bob. I think I'll wash up for dinner. In other towns, when a man finds out who my husband really is, they make it a public spectacle, a ritual. They tie him in the public square and shave off his beard so that all can see the D that your army branded on his cheek. Yeah, I'm not surprised. He was a hero in my country. Have in mind, senora. Let me tell you a thing about my husband. He never deserted a friend. He was loyal to his men to the end. We come by to find out if we're getting off your land, we are. We'll be gone come morning. It'll be a job. What for? I was a traitor five hours ago. Same man now. That's right. You said you'd haul for me. You said no. Something changed your mind? Nothing's changed, Riley. And do you want a crack at bringing those beams down, or don't you? Why? Because Campbell Freight can't do it. You're just too stiff-necked to admit you need me, Cartwright. All right. If it'll make you feel any better. We need each other. Each other. You can't saw them beans. You can't put drill holes in them. You can't put spikes in them and it'll weaken them. You're not going to balance a 30-foot beam on a wagon. You ain't got the rig to do it if you knew how. Cambo knows he can't do it. What makes you think I can do it? Yeah, I saw you do it. You can on the heights at Churubusco. I saw that road. There was no way to get those long guns around those turns, but you did it. <laughs> yeah, I did it. In that war we were in. I'll haul your beams for you. And deliver them unscratched. Stop and when? Come morning. You ain't got no special fondness for that bugboard I saw at your place. How are you going to use that bugboard? Well, not the whole bugboard, just the front wheels and the wagon tongue. Well, I don't see how. You... Why don't you come by in the morning and see if you're right?
50, 60, 70, 80. Ninety-one hundred dollars. Yeah, well, I think before you decide for sure, you ought to know what the rules say. Now, the first wagon to cross the finish line will be awarded a two-year contract. No wagon crosses the line, no contract. Gunny, Gunny will finish. In that wagon, huh? Mm-hmm. Now, each wagon will be loaded with one ton of mixed freight. Well, Clem, we know the rules. Now, hold on. This is over 15 of the toughest, steepest miles we could find. It'll be an easy day for Gunny. Here's the hundred dollars entrance fee, Clem. Well, all right, you're the boss. Hang on, don't you want a receipt? Now you try to leave town with the money, I'll call the sheriff. <laughs> <laughs> take care. You take care. Them boys just wasting their money. Gunny Creek won't last five miles, let alone 15. Yeah, hey, I've got money here that says you're wrong. You're on. Hey, Willard, how come you know more than that whip? You don't need that. You know, Joe and Candy just paid Gunny's entry fee. <laughs> Looks like you and your boss got some real competition now. I'm betting Gunny takes it. Willard will be driving. Him and Cambo's been rolling freight all their lives. I got $20 here that says Gunny wins the race. You got a bet. You mean you two put up a $100 entry fee for me? That's right. You're gonna race Cambo tomorrow. No, I'm not. You just wasted yourself $100. Well, what's the matter, man? You afraid you can't beat him? I'm the best, and so is my team, but I ain't racing. Now, look, if this has got something to do with the problem between you and my pa, forget it. The answer is no. Now, you just get away from here and leave me be. Job that nobody else could do. I got paid for it. I don't owe nobody nothing. Up till now, get either. But you could win from Campbell. Why? What for? Perhaps for Ben Cartwright. For Ben Cartwright? You think he's changed? No more than me, he hasn't. But that did not stop him from giving you work. As much as he hated the thing you did. And he did not tell the others about you. Well, another man will, won't he? They always do. But not Ben Cartwright. I don't owe him nothing. I have a feeling in my heart that you do. You're the better of anything. Easy, senor. Now, you only have one shot left in that scatter gun. And that's four of us. That's a primer. That's far enough. Come on, move out. Move out before somebody gets hurt. You're gonna pay for this car, right? Campbell's gonna squeeze you dry. The gunny isn't gonna run that race. I changed my mind. You can't run that race. I said I changed my mind. I'm better than you are. I am better than he is. You're gonna eat my dust tomorrow, so now you get. The gunny? I need to save your breath. I'm running that race tomorrow. Why? You want to show me how good you are? I'm my own man, Ben Cartwright. I got my own reasons for what I do. You may win, but you'll never get that contract. Why, are you gonna stop me? No. The government will. Before they give you a contract, they'll investigate you. They'll find out you fought with the Mexicans, killed American soldiers. No, you'll never get the contract. Then the newspapers will find out, and everybody around town will know who you are and what you did. I don't want the contract, but I'm, I'm not gonna let Campbell get it without a fight. Well, you can't run that race alone. I'll help you. Swamper, Brakeman, anything you need. Carter, I plan to run my team down that mountain flat out tomorrow from Giddy up to Woe. You got the belly for that? 
We better fix that wheel and get the wagon ready. All right, gentlemen, you've got four minutes till starting time. I'm gonna run them right in the ground, Mr. Campbell. The way I figure, I ought to finish at least a mile ahead. All right, now, I'm gonna tell you... No, why I'm... don't you... Now, me. listen to me! You try using that whip on me today like you did last night, and I'm gonna do two things. First of all, I'm gonna wreck that wagon. And second of all, I'm gonna shove that whip down your throat. Do you understand me? Mighty big talk, mister. I'm through. Now, wait a minute. What's this about last night? He's your man. I figure you know. Well, if I knew, I wouldn't be asking what happened. He come visiting me and my woman. Well, that whip and some of his friends. Is that true? I was just talking, Mr. Campbell. He was just trying to run me out of town so he could win the race. That's what he was doing. That's the truth, Campbell. I was there. Ed? Yes, sir. You're driving for me. You're fired. Hey, now, wait a minute. What Get out of here! Uh, Willard's idea, not mine. I didn't have to do things like that to win. And I'm gonna win. It's just as good a driver as Willard, maybe better. Ten seconds, gentlemen.
to take a ride? Come on. What are you two doing? Ain't you going to wait for the finish of the race? I can't wait to find out who's going to leave. We're going to ride out and meet him. They ought to be halfway down that mountain by now. I think I'll hang around here and have me a beer and a seat on the finish line. I'll see you later. See you later.
congratulations, buddy. What are you doing sitting down here? You're supposed to be up there on the rocks. Well, here's the contract. It just has to be filled out with a name signed and witnessed, but it's yours. You won. <laughs> well, that's a lot of work for a little bit of piece of paper. <laughs> Come on, boys. The beer's on me. <laughs> Well, it's a fine piece of driving. Yeah, you're the first man to ever beat me in a contract race. I guess this is gonna put you out of business, huh? Probably. I'll try, but you can't show a profit without that contract. Well, I, uh, I might talk a trade. What, partnership? A what? You name it. New wagon, new harness, and a load of freight to haul up north. Is that all? Well, no, that ain't all. I didn't beat you by myself. Ben Cartwright and me, we's old vets. I guess he had a stake in this race, too. I'll tell you what, you write a contract to haul freight for the Ponderosa for a fair price. You guarantee the same for all comers, and she's yours. You got a deal. I'll have it in writing in 20 minutes. You can pick out your wagon and harness whenever you like. All right. In case you're wondering, Will is the one that dropped the tree in the road. You sure? I'm sure. We got two witnesses. You could have wrecked both wagons and killed us all. I'll sign a complaint. Get down off of that. Sheriff, hold up. You ain't by any chance the same fellow who cut my lead line, are you? Your rent's paid for a long while. turns cleaning out these water holes and for some unknown reason candy always gets the messiest job <laughs> yeah just seems like some fellas never have no luck don't it yeah. come payday there's gonna be some changes changes what kind of changes i'm gonna take myself into virginia city and i'm gonna get me a brand new set of clothes i mean hat shirt pants boots the works and ain't gonna be work clothes either oh. and i'm gonna get myself a haircut and a shave and a four-hour bath to get this mud out of my hide. I'm gonna get myself all dressed up 
And I'm going out among them. Really have some high living, huh? Higher than the courthouse flagpole, brother. Hey, you know, a fella can't do too much of that high living just on a dollar, and that's all you're gonna have if you get through buying all them duds. Oh, he's not gonna have that much. See, I seem to recall Candy getting an advance from Pa on this month's wages. Oops. They're gonna have enough money for a new handkerchief, let alone do any of that high living. <laughs> All right, I forgot. <laughs> next month. Next month. <laughs> well, we'll see you next month. Yeah. <laughs> it's got to be an easier way to make a living. Right? Yeah, you keep digging. You might strike it rich. <laughs> we'll see you, Candy. Candidate? Yeah. Did you know a Paiute named Billy Two Biscuit? Paiute? Yeah, I know. Where were you the uh, first week in April this year? What's that to you? Could be very important. First week of April, I don't know. I was in Billy Biscuit's cabin, that's where I was. The uh, the south slope of Squaw Mountain. How was he? Hurting. He broke his leg. Oh, you saved his life. You found him in a snowstorm with a broken leg. You took him to his cabin, nursed him, fed him. If you know all that, what are you asking me for? To make sure you're the right man. Billy Two Biscuit uh, died recently, a snake bite. He made you his sole heir. He left you his mining claim. Poor Billy, poor Billy. Now. I represent Nevada Mining Incorporated. And I'm here to make you one firm take it or leave it offer. $100,000 plus standard royalties for the right to develop and work the mine. 100,000 what? Dollars. 50,000 in cash, 50,000 in shares in Beulah Land Sales and Development Corporation. I have the cash with me. You got something you want me to sign? Yes, sir, I sure do. Here you are. <laughs> right there, the bottom line. Here? Right, that's it. Right. <laughs> How long is it to dinner? I don't know, about an hour or so, I guess. Sunstroke? Hmm. Could be. Local weed, maybe. <laughs> hey, buddy, you all right? Yeah, well, all right. Have you ever seen a whole satchel full of money? Look at that. Here. Here. Have a sample. <laughs> That's real money. That, 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 that's $500. Still there. <laughs> it's still real. It's hard to believe. I'll tell you, that Billy Two Biscuit sure must have thought a lot of you. He was kind of a hermit, Joe. I... Poor Villa, I don't think he knew anybody else. What are you going to do first, Candy? The first thing I'm going to do is I'm not going to worry about what I'm going to do first. I'm just going <laughs> to float and enjoy. <laughs> yeah, don't blame me. This uh, Beulah Land Corporation, Candy, did Mr. Hornsby tell you anything about it? Just that the stock certificates are in this bag, and uh, I looked, and they are. That's all I know. Mm. I was just wondering. I'd never heard of them. I'll find out and let you know.
want to say that every minute I've spent here has been a pure pleasure. Uh, I imagine the biggest one was clean out that water hole, huh? Oh, yeah, they're fun. <laughs> Even that. I don't quite know how to say this, but uh, I'm in your debt. Oh. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm right. If you ever feel a pinch for money, all you have to do is whistle, and, and I'll be glad to help. <laughs> Candy. Thank you. I'm going to have a party, a big party. Be a favor to me if you could spare Hoss and Joe to help with the planner. Oh. Well, if you think that uh, Hoss and Joe are good at planning parties, of course. <laughs> Can you leave now? We're halfway there. Let's go. Let's go. Hey, Thanks, a millionaire. Uh, Candy. I forgot. <laughs> Come on, money bags. <laughs> Estimated at one million dollars. <laughs> Mr. Canaday, I'm Harriet Caster. We've never really met. We did once. This is my daughter, Ruth. We're having an open house Sunday afternoon at two. Just good friends, good talk, good food. We'd be delighted if you'd join us. Uh, well, I'd... I'd uh... Good, good. We'll see you at two. Come along, dear. Want to be among the first. Long had the feeling that you'd be a man of importance. H. Parker Smith, Mr. Kennedy. Spent my life in the world of finance. Be a pleasure to serve as your investment counselor. Well, uh, my card, sir. Uh, 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 gentlemen, Mr. Mr. Kennedy has a lot of business to discuss. Uh, if you'll excuse us, Mr. Kennedy, hey, come right in. Uh, uh, if, if you'll excuse us, gentlemen, please. Excuse me, George. Mr. Williams, excuse me. Well, he's a very important fellow. You're Mr. Smith. Did you guys read the papers? I'm the newest millionaire in town. Oh, I forgot. I forgot. How do you like it? Uh, yeah, it's a little small, but it'll do for now. For now? Yeah, for now. Till I uh, knock out a few walls and maybe build myself a brand new one. <laughs> do a lot of entertaining. Oh, that's right. I almost forgot you're invited to Harriet Castor's tea party. Put you up there with the best of them. Well, give me a chance to discuss my new stock holdings with some of the rest of them millionaires. You know, I didn't even know you knew Harriet Castor. Where'd you meet her? Hmm. Oh, uh, for the July parade, I told her she was standing on my foot. Oh, well, he really knows it. <laughs> Forty miles of fine print in this thing. Mr. Kennedy! Mr. Kennedy, it's the hotel manager! Uh, Mr. Kennedy! Mr. Kennedy, it's a hotel manager, Mr. Kennedy. Just a minute. Just a minute. Mr. Kennedy, Mr. Kennedy. Later. Later. And compliments of the management. Well, thank you. Thank you. They were a little busy right oh, now. Oh, yes, of course. Now, I just wanted to assure you that myself and the staff are at your disposal. Stand ready uh, to do anything at all to, to make your stay worthwhile and enjoyable. Uh, special food. Everybody, 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 Beulah Land Corporation. Mm, these are good. They sell land. That makes sense. Uh, ranches and farms in Beulah Valley. Wherever that is. Oh, didn't it say where? In Nevada. That's all it says. Here, take a look. Yeah, no, ma'am, that's him over there, that surrounded one. Hey, 
pretty. Yeah, I was about to say the same thing. I meant the money. I think I did buy a suit. A suit? When that tailor left here, he's talking about six. Well, a man can use six suits. That jewelry fella had some good looking watches. Yeah, I saw a good looking watcher watching your money. The money. Money? Where's the money? Hey. You looking for this? <laughs> Thanks, Joe. Why don't you be smart? Put it in the bank. Now. And uh, then let's have a nice cold beer. Huh? What do you mean beer? With your kind of money, I want champagne. I'll take either. <laughs> You'll take both. <laughs> hey, watch it. What's your money? Virginia City Spider Stack. And what's this? Imported beer. The best. Came all the way from Europe. Right around the horn. Oh, it uh, costs a little more, but uh, Mr. Candy can sure afford it now that he's a millionaire. If I'm not a millionaire, I can't. You ain't changed a bit, Candy. Now, that's the good part. You hit it big, but you're the same old Candy. Thank you. Uh, you son of a gun, you. All right, now, we got the guest list. Virginia ah, City is ah. coming. Now, what about, uh, what about music, entertainment? Oh, we're going to have a lot of people. It's got to be a big band or they won't hear it. Hey, how about the fireman's band? They ain't very good, but they sure are loud. Hey, they are. They're loud. Yeah, all right. Make it two bands. That way the folks won't have to stop dancing when the uh, musicians are out getting a beer. Very good, very good. Two bands, loud. I like that. Penny. Now, what about food? You gotta have some good food. What do you like? Well, Canada. Honey. I think we better Hare. have a couple of... Jim here. I own the Rocker H Ranch. Oh, I've heard of the brand, yeah. Been building it for 10 years. Fighting Paiutes, Nestors, Rustlers. Well, a fair spread now. I'm getting bigger all the time. That's great. If I want to buy a ranch, I'll look you up. You think two is enough? It's well, not for sale. Three, huh? What I'm here for, what's this Beulah Land Company? It says here you're a major stockholder. Oh, yeah, that just happened. I uh, haven't gotten into it yet. I got a brother, little Billy, lives in New York. Got a wife and five kids. He's doing fine, but he wants to come west. So he sold his business and bought himself 200 acres of Beulah Valley orchard land. Good grass, water, roads, bridges. Uh, sounds like a good deal to me. Where is Beulah Valley? I've been in Nevada 20 years. I never even heard of it. Well, I don't know. But I'll find out. If you want to come by the hotel tomorrow, I'll tell you all about it, all right? See me tomorrow at the hotel. Hey, are, Mr. Kennedy. Finest watches in the world. Solid gold nugget chain. Oh, I like that. Partner said it was down here somewhere. So the brand new office just opened yesterday. Hey. Anybody want to know what time it is? You told us four times in the last three minutes. Hey. Hey, there it is. New sign, too. What do you mean you don't know? You work here? I just started yesterday. Who does know? Mr. Perry. But he isn't here. When will Perry be here? Tomorrow. He said he'd be here all day tomorrow. Yeah, well, so will I. You better have some answers by then, too. Mm. Gentlemen. Why, well, you're Mr. Kennedy. All that money, it must be wonderful. Oh, when I find out, I'll let you know. Right now, I want to know where Beulah Valley is. Well, like I told that gentleman, I just started working. I don't really know. M Mr. Perry did say it was east of here. Well, so's New York. And the Mississippi. How far east? 
He didn't tell me. Well, I've ridden all over the eastern part of Nevada, and I never heard of no Beulah Valley. Hey, maybe we can find out at the courthouse. Uh, my new watch says the courthouse is closed. Let's grab some more of that seasick beer. Hey, thanks. Stay. Bring uh, coffee now, yes? No, later. Uh, did you order breakfast? Three breakfast. Fried eggs, ham, toast, coffee. Is that all? Plenty breakfast. I ye knows how much three men eat. Maybe. But I ye doesn't know how it's right. Hey, you've been in there for two hours splashing around. When are you getting out? Been in there long enough to grow fins. Hell yeah. Well, I promised myself a long hot bath to get that water hole mud out of my hide, and I'm just collecting. <laughs> Go catch him double order of everything, boss. Right. Who, who's that? Oh, that's Ayi. I hired him this morning. I for what? I needed somebody to fetch and carry. Oh, well, everybody needs one of those. Well, of course. We're gonna go fetch us some breakfast. You wanna come along? No need. Breakfast's on its way up. Gee, it's nice to be rich, isn't it? Ah, uh, yes. Mm. <laughs> Understand to see good food going to waste. Well, we notice. Hey, here's one from an old friend of yours, a fellow named Billy Martingale. Ever heard of him? Well, anyway, he wants to borrow ten thousand dollars from you. Hmm. Maybe he's going to pay you back though, two dollars a week. <laughs> ah, that's all right. He must come from a long-lived family. This one from a little girl I went to school with. The town I was never in. Oh. <laughs> hey, here, here's a beauty. Hey, you didn't go to school with this girl, but you know her real well. Yeah, you ever hear of a girl named Sally Simpson? No. You don't know her? Well, you, you're, you're going to. You better show that to your lawyer. Hey, it's a little girl that wants to marry me. If I send $3,000, I don't have to come to the wedding. I don't blame her. <laughs> Go away, please. Nobody home. Go away, please. Nobody home. Mr. Kennedy! Atwood Perry! You will answer them. I've got to Perry. talk to you. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, let him in. Perry. Mr. Kennedy. Yes. Come in. Nice come to in, meet come you. In. This thank is uh, Joe Cartwright, uh, Hoss Cartwright, friends of mine. That's right. How are you? Would you uh, like some breakfast? Uh, no, thank you very much. Uh, I was sorry to have missed you yesterday. I yeah. always like to know our stockholders, especially when their holdings entitle them to a seat on the board. What? The board of directors. Your 5,000 shares entitle you handsomely. Uh, may I change my mind and uh, have a cup of coffee? Board of directors? Yeah. Coffee, yes. Yeah. Sit down, sit down, sit down. I'll get it for you. Thank you. Um, how do you take it? Uh, just black, please. Mm, ain't that something? Yesterday, the only CD he had was on board a horse. Well, that's how to succeed, though. Hard work, and a fella come along handing you a satchel full of money. That's well, right. You shall not go unrewarded, my friends. Oh, thank you. Look, I brought a little uh, booklet that you might study at your leisure. Tells you all about the corporation. Hmm. Thanks. Uh, we're always on the lookout for capable young men, you know. Have you uh, ever built a bridge or uh, built a road or maybe dug a well? Yeah, all three. <laughs> you ought to see him clean a water hole. All three? Yeah. Really? Mm -hmm. Well, then you're my man. You're hired. <laughs> uh, no, 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 no. Talk to me in a year or two, because uh, until then, I'm going to be doing some resting. Well, I may have said it badly. What I'm offering you is a position as vice president. in charge of field operations. Well, um, Atworth, I'm trying to tell you that I've retired. Well, loafing gets to be pretty hard work. I think you'll find that out in a day or two. Hmm. No, no, and him, I don't think so. Speaking of local, we better get back to the ranch. Probably gonna think we retired. No. Mr. Perry, pleasure to meet you. Nice to meet you, How gentlemen. Aye, get their hats, huh? Beulah Valley? Mm-hmm. Where's it at? Why, that's right next door to heaven. 
It's probably easier to show you than to tell you about it, and I'll be very happy to do that one of these days soon. Well, we've been living here for a long time. I just never heard of it, that's all. Well, look, since your friends are leaving, why don't you come with me and have a look at your new office? My office? I didn't say I was going to take that job. No, but you said you were going to think about it. You might as well have a look at your new office. Come on. Vice President. <laughs> Hey, you got my hat? Yeah, if it still fits. <laughs> Thank you. Later, fellas. Later. 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 Just passing, Mr. Kennedy. How nice to see you again. Uh, Ruth is thinking of buying a Tennessee Walker, and she'd like to have your advice. With the horses I've been riding, I don't think it'll be much help, but I'd sure like to try. Oh. It's good to know that our new vice president has so many important friends. I'll be in my office to drop by first chance again. Right. I've got your suit ready for Just a take a look Mr. at these handmade beauties. Penny. Pardon look, me, please, gentlemen. Please, please. Mr. Kennedy, look, we were discussing this, weren't we? Yes. yes. The most beautiful workmanship. Uh, well, like I am. Now, look, Penny, please, I'm trying to explain to this Gibson, man. please. Surprise. Yeah. Uh, I'm, yeah, I'm glad you could come by. Can I get you? Oh, I see. Uh, I.E. already got you. Yes, he got me some tea. Won't you join me? Yeah. I.E.? Oh, why, I'm sorry. He's, he stepped out. He did what? He stepped out. He went to get me some cakes, um, cookies. You'd want me to have them, wouldn't you? Well, sure. A whole lot of them, if that's what you want. Sit down. I just came to say hello. You know, I was surprised there wasn't many people in the hall. Well, I think it's because uh, I've already bought everything in town. <laughs> I've met millionaires before, but not like you. Oh, is that a fact? Yeah. They were all old and fat and ugly, but you're not. <laughs> well, I'm not uh, old. Or fat, or bald, and you're certainly not ugly. Now that I've found you, I'm I'm wondering what you're going to do. Oh, I just remember I've, uh, I've got to run an errand. Oh, this is my lucky day. What? Well, I have nothing to do. I could go with you. One for each of you. Oh, Are you no. serious? <laughs> wow. I, you like yeah, it? Yeah, beautiful. I like it. They're magnificent. He's... But why? You got birthdays coming up sometime. Call them birthday presents. <laughs> well, you can't. It's awfully nice of you, but, you know, they're obviously very expensive saddles, and, well, well they're just too fine for working stockmen. You know where we're close to church. These are Sunday saddles. <laughs> Every man ought to have one. <laughs> In that case, there's nothing we can say except thank you. My pleasure. Hey, thanks thank a lot. Thank you very buddy. much, Kenneth. Hey, thank you, buddy. <laughs> thank you, Kenneth. Hey, look, we uh, we got some fresh coffee inside. Why don't you and your friend come on yeah, in? Yeah, come on in. Uh, thank you, but uh, we got to be getting back. Hey, Kenny, did you ever find out where that Beulah Valley was? Uh, not yet, but I took the job. I'm working for Beulah Corporation now, so I'll find out and let you know. Hey, you're vice president, huh? Well, that's what it says on the door. I'll see you. Hey, good luck. Yeah. With everything. Thank you, Candy. You bet. See ya. Oh, these are really magnificent sounds. Oh, Something wrong with you? Yeah. Beulah Valley? Yeah, Beulah Valley. It just doesn't make any sense to me. If it's if it's so beautiful and so marvelous, why has it nobody ever heard of it? sell ranches for a dollar. Yeah, a dollar made it legal. 
And then the fellow didn't have to tell you what you're buying, neither. You sure, then? Of course I'm sure. I'm sure. If you're so smart, how come we rode to four different county seats before we finally came here where all the deed transactions are recorded? Nice day for riding. Besides, I didn't know there was such a place as this until that fellow in the saloon told me about it. Now I'm beginning to think there ain't no such place as that Beulah Valley. Oh, that's probably just a new name. What we're looking for is a, a transaction of a large piece of land in the name of that Atworth Perry fellow. Yeah, I'm beginning to think he don't exist, neither. Atworth Perry. I do hereby sell for the sum of one dollar. Sections 21, 22, 24, 26, 27, a lot of this. Yeah, Township 12. Let's take a look at that map. Yeah. All right, section 21, 22, 24, 26. Uh, never mind the sections, little brother. We've been there. Yeah, we sure have. Let's go. Thanks a lot. Thank you, gentlemen. Glad to see you. There, I have some things that you really must see. Now, I think that red and white. Would... I think blue and gold would be much better. Pretty. Red and white is much more effective. Come into the dining room, and I'll show you. Hey, yes, ma'am. I know exactly where the band must go. <laughs> go here all by yourself. You have plenty of help planning your party. You don't need me. Oh, yes, I do. Mr. Cannon, Mr. Cannon, sorry to disturb you, but I I can't get those suits ready unless you come in for a fitting. Um, uh, later. I get the definite idea you don't like parties. You're right. I don't. How about a picnic? I like picnics. I know a spot. I could have somebody hitch up the buggy. We could go down by a little lake. Well, what about Melody? Let her find her own picnic. <laughs> um, I'll have the cook package a lunch. Candy, want to take a little ride with us? Uh, later. I want to show you something, Candy. It's kind of important. Uh, I, I think they're pretty serious about this. You better go with them. Well, I, I guess I have to. I'll see you later. Where'd Mr. Canada go? Away. said his brother bought from the Beulah Corporation. 200 acres, orchard land, grass, water, roads. What's that got to do with this? You're looking at Beulah Valley. Yeah, it used to be called Starvation Flat. Mr. Perry changed the name of it. Are you sure? We're oh, sure we looked it up. Perry bought 15,000 acres of this paradise for Beulah Corporation. What are you going to do about it? <laughs> Wait a minute. What? Why look at me? Why look at you? You're a stockholder and vice president. Candy, people back east are, them are spending every penny they got buying up what they think is good orchard land. They're moving their whole families out here. <laughs> Beulah 
valley is a lot closer to hell than it is to heaven. Even the lizards can't grow out there. Sand, alkali, and rocks. You couldn't grow anything but a dust storm on that land. Well, you know you're only partly right, because water will make all the difference. And the proof is right there in that flower pot. Now, that's soil from Beulah Valley. It's water and a little fertilizer, and it's a healthy plant. But there's no water out there. That valley's a garden spot compared to what you're selling. It's a completely legal operation. Yesterday, today, and tomorrow. We have not and will not break any laws. You told Jim Hare's brother he's buying orchard land. That's got to be fraud. Why don't you sit down, Mr. Kennedy? Because I think the time has come for me to tell you some of the facts about corporate life. I'm listening. Beulah Land Development does not sell land to individuals, but only to the Beulah Land Development Company. Now, that's a separate and, and individual entity. That's a sales organization with offices in the major cities back east. So they do the selling, and they tell the lies. Well, the salesmen have been known to exaggerate, but if Mr. Hare reads the contract he signed, he'll find out that he got exactly what he paid for. 200 acres of land. Well, what about the roads and the good grass and the water? The roads will be built, wells will be dug. It's all part of our arrangement and our deal with Beulah Land Development Corporation. When do you start? Well, we're in the planning stage right now. As soon as our plans are completed, why, we'll start assembling the equipment and the crews. When? Well, that's hard to say. Because our vice president in charge of field operations has been much too busy to talk about it. Me? Yes, you. I'm supposed to dig the wells and find the water? <laughs> that's right, Mr. Kennedy. But there's no water out there. You and I both know that. Well, you may believe that if you like, but I have a little more faith. <laughs> Look. It's a dog-eat-dog -dog world. And it's been that way since the dawn of time. Do you know the Romans even had a, a phrase for it? Caveat emptor. Let the buyer beware. There's got to be a way to stop you. Now, before you start bucking and kicking and spending a lot of time and money on expensive lawyers, you better stop and think about the stock that you own. It could make you a very rich man. Great fortunes are started just this way. And remember, it's perfectly legal. Send him away. He cheat you blind. Make come shop by every merchant, 20 cent every dollar. Then he double the bill. This one he multiplied 10 times. There's no beer. How about some real good whiskey? I talked to Perry. Real operation is completely legal. The law can't touch it. What are you going to do? The law can't stop him. What can I do? If they sell 15,000 acres of that desert, a lot of people are going to get hurt. Mr. Perry said the Romans had a phrase for that. Let the buyer beware. He also said all I have to do is sit still, and I'm going to get very rich.
Yeah, sure. Come on in. Candy? Just in time, sit down. I'm here because I'm in trouble. I need your help. Well, sit down. Have something to eat. Tell us about it. I've been trying to figure out a way to stop Perry. I've been having a lot of no luck. The uh, Beulah Land Corporation sells only to corporations outside the state. Is that the trouble? That's right. And they don't make any promises they can't keep. Other corporations do that. Mm -hmm. Have some dumplings. Hop Singh really outdid himself. Hop Singh, bring another plate out here. I'm George Thurston. Is Ben Cartwright here? Yes. George, oh, good money. <laughs> You're right on time. I try to be. Yeah. Uh, you must be the Mr. Canada that Ben mentioned in his That's telegram. Right, Thank you very much for coming. That's well, part of my job. Oh, the legislators and the governor feel that the state land commissioner should go where he's needed. I have to tell you, Mr. Perry came to my attention two years ago. Huh? A timber fraud. He was sentenced to a year in jail, but appealed and wiggled free. I found him to be slippery, dishonest. And a complete scoundrel. Excuse my not knocking. But a scoundrel. That's what you called me after the appeal. What are you doing here? I heard you were in town. Now, any documents that you might want to see I have in this portfolio? There you are, Mr. Thurston. He's much too helpful and much too happy, but... We might as well get on with it. If there are any questions, I'll be... Well, I'll ask them. So what is this? Uh, that's the uh, list of landowners. This? Oh, that's the map of Beulah Valley. Just where is Beulah Valley? Um, Beulah Valley is, uh, or was, Starvation Flat. Uh, Mr. Perry renamed it. Here are the names and addresses. There were 200 of them. Men who bought acreage in that waste. Yeah, not from me and not in Nevada. They bought from corporations in the East. Uh, George, I bought... 200 acres right in the middle of Starvation Flat. And I bought them right here in Nevada. Oh, no, you didn't, because I didn't sell it to you. But I did. And I'm a vice president of Beulah Land Corporation. You're fired. <clears throat> I'm afraid it's a bit late for that, uh, Mr. Perry. Uh, George, I bought this land yesterday. 200 acres. Well, well. And uh, what were you promised, Mr. Cartwright? Oh, other marvelous things. Uh, deep wells, sweet water, fertile orchard land, good grass, and all in writing. The sweetest words I ever heard. I am not going to jail. Now, you just take it very easy. Nobody's going to get hurt. Just happened to be passing by the door out there and saw this fellow backing out with a gun in his hand. And how long were you out there just passing the door? Ever since you came in, Paul thought it might be a good idea. It was. 
You gentlemen will just escort us. I think we'll take a little walk now and say hello to the sheriff. Hey, I'm a friend. Where are your glasses? Oh, 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 oh. not right now. Uh, some reporters waiting downstairs to talk to George and me. They uh, want to know all about the fuel of antidote. Arise and decline. <laughs> Can't hurry back. It's a lot more than that. Right. Ruth? Oh, yes. Giving away all that money, well, I, I think it was just wonderful. It wasn't all that wonderful. Like, I got the mining claim back. Yeah. <laughs> Boss, have us some more champagne. Yeah. Hey, why don't you stop popping around like a bug in a bottle and relax? Enjoy your party. Yeah, I will in a minute. I'll wait now. It does have a mine and lots of credit. Unlimited. So they tell me. Well, if you got unlimited credit, how about some more champagne? <laughs> Come right up. Right this way. That's Kennedy. There, there he is, right there. Kennedy. Thank you. What are they gonna do, boy? My credentials, Howard Fiber, Bureau of Indian Affairs. I understand you recently inherited a mining claim from Billy Two Biscuit, a Paiute Indian, deceased. Uh, yeah, yeah, I, uh, I sold it, but I just got it back. My duty is to inform you that all mining claims and properties due under Paiute law, honored and enforced by the United States government and the Bureau of Indian Affairs, become the property of the Paiute tribe upon the death of said owner. I didn't know that. You do now. I've taken over the claim for the Paiute tribe. Good day, sir. Take, take it back! Take it back! Well, it was a lot of fun while it lasted, folks, but uh, the party's over. I'm afraid I'm going to have to ask you for immediate payment of your bill. Six suits. I want my money. Me first. Where's mine? Gentlemen, uh, I gave back the money, you see. And, 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 uh, the Indians just took back the mine. All, all I have is this. Oh. Oh. Wait a minute. Oh. 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 It's been nice. Maybe someday somebody will give you another mine or something. <laughs> payday. Well, when you get all the rest of your bills paid back. All right. Some payday. I'm going to go into Virginia City and buy me that new suit of clothes. Well, you can have some more of that high living, huh? Well, uh, no, I've, uh, I've had some of that and it's hard work. <laughs> this time I'm going to find a better way to go. Hey, speaking of going, we better get back to the ranch. Yeah. Hey, what time is it? You still got that fancy gold watch of yours, don't you? <laughs> 